Hi, this is Mo Maduro with the Life Expansion After 50 podcast. Today, we're continuing on with the topic of breaking down the success principles in the context of neuroplasticity, coherence, mindfulness, and the unconscious, things that we can actually grasp with our senses. And we should be able to get through this fairly quickly. We're in the home stretch. I think I can do this remaining ones in the next two episodes. First one up is uh, practice daily gratitude. So you want to start and end your day by listing things that you're grateful for. Gratitude amplifies positive energy. As Joe Dispenza likes to say, it's the ultimate state of receivership. And I'll put a link to his books in the text. So create a ritual. Develop a daily routine where you visualize your goals, affirm your desires, and cultivate positive emotions. Think of this as a daily practice to reinforce the associations. Again, the more you can build those neural pathways, the more likely they are to fire in the way you need them to. In addition, given the 11 million bits per second processing speed, you're putting automaticity to work for you. Now, 50 years ago, when I read the chapter on autosuggestion in the book Think and Grow Rich, I didn't understand it at all. I thought of somehow attracting things through osmosis. As I said earlier, sometimes it worked, but oftentimes it didn't. The bigger the gap to the thing I wanted, the less often it worked. I thought it had to do with magnitude, and I simply wasn't good enough at it yet. Now that I understand that I am, one, building associations so my internal environment responds appropriately to any stimulus, and two, building familiarity so that my rapid-fire unconscious and reticular activating system will see and highlight the signposts and on-ramps to my destination. The next one is use creative visualization. Now imagine your goals with rich sensory detail. Engage all your senses to intensify that experience in your mind. The more emotion you can infuse in your visualizations, the more you're building the neural pathways and you're working on the internal environment. Emotion makes the inner experience more real, meaning the effect is greater and you're closer to building the internal environment that enables the neuroplasticity and gene expression to result in the pathways to the visualized desire. Now here's an illustration. Before a job interview, James closed his eyes and vividly imagined himself acing the interview. He felt the handshake, heard the words of praise, and experienced the elation of success. Now, I've done something similar any time before I speak to an audience. I literally visualize a standing ovation. Of course, it doesn't always result in a standing ovation, but it does wonders for reducing anxiety and getting those butterflies flying in formation. And I'm also able to play loose as, it, as the saying goes. Next one is practice emotional alignment. Match your emotions to your desired outcomes. Feel as if you've already achieved your goals. Now, this may seem like I'm saying the same thing as above, but there is a difference. I'm talking about alignment here. A good exercise is to get into a state of mindfulness and ask yourself, what, if anything, is not on track for your goal? Don't judge, just listen. Be curious. You may or may not get an answer. You can also ask, what is my part in this today to make meaningful progress? What you're doing here is looking for areas that lack alignment, and then you can act on them. Next is surround yourself with inspiration. Fill your environment with visuals, quotes, and items that inspire and motivate you. The more they mean to you, the better. Now, you want a connection. Otherwise, they're, they can just pass into the 11 million bits of information. So try to pick visuals that actually have meaning for you. Next, set clear intentions. Be crystal clear about what you want to, to have come, come to pass. Vague intentions lead to mixed results. The writing crystallizes thought. Often we have competing goals or there is something that we're hanging on to or a belief that's contrary to what we want. So by avoiding clarity and specificity, we don't have to address the conflict. That's the problem. So here's a quick illustration. Mark has a vague idea about finding love. He realized he needed clarity. So he created a detailed list of qualities he wanted in a partner. As he gained clarity, he met someone who matched his intentions remarkably well. You may have heard this before. Now, I've experienced something similar myself and have heard many gurus speak about it. My read is that, as I've been saying all along, these potentials exist all around us all the time. But when you have a clear list of qualities, then you can see it. Without the list, it's just another bit per second of the 11 million. So that's the benefit of doing this. It's not so much a woo-woo thing, it's that we're now seeing it. So forced a giving mindset. Give without expecting anything in return. This generosity can amplify your positive energy. It gets to an abundance mindset. Remember, 
I'm also suggesting that the opposite can be, not always, but can be a nocebo. In other words, in this instance, to, to be expecting something in return every time you do something, you can set up a system of lack and being judgmental and even feeling like a victim. Create a positive affirmation playlist. Compile a list of affirmations and listen to them regularly, either while meditating or during your daily activities. There's a nice process of coming up with affirmations instead of just randomly making affirmations. First, list the behaviors you want to change or get rid of or thought patterns that don't serve you. Then create affirmations that are the inverse or the opposite. This is like layering on new habits rather than focusing on trying to break an old one. Next is engaging in energy-boosting activities. To participate in activities that elevate your energy, such as exercising, spending time in nature, or engaging in hobbies that you love. Given that we have 100 billion neurons in their physical matter, it stands to reason there's a benefit from exercise and being in nature. As for hobbies and doing things that we love, it's pretty simple. Would you rather have negative habit patterns or positive ones? The more time we spend in a habit of thought, the more we reinforce that state. Personally, sometimes when I'm getting into a low energy state, I'll go for a bicycle ride or take my one wheel out. The combination of moving my body, being in fresh air, and seeing different scenery can completely shift my energy. It could be a simple, brisk walk. And then you can add in some deep breathing as well. Experiment. Find out what works for you, and then start adding it into your, your daily routines. So practice letting go. Release attachment to outcomes. When you become attached to an outcome, it can be a slippery slope. There are things that are in your control, things that you can influence, and things you simply have to accept. You can do everything right, but the outcome can still be something you didn't want. Attach to the journey and what you're becoming, but not the outcome. Next, we have use affirmations in the mirror as an exercise. Stand in front of a mirror and repeat your affirmations aloud, looking into your own eyes. Now, I don't want to beat a dead horse with these variations of a similar theme affirmations, but starting with the premise that our lives are 95% habit, the more time I spend building a habit pattern that does serve me is less time the old pattern is running. Since it's more effective to replace habits than it is to break them, giving myself high fives and looking at myself in the mirror while smiling and repeating affirmations is not going to hurt at all, and it's a minute or two that your default mode network is not in play. That wraps up this segment, and I'll finish up with the next one as we finalize the episodes on mapping success principles to the unconscious and neuroplasticity. Mm -hmm.